G'day, and welcome back. Well, not welcome back, welcome to Ranico Plays Massive Chalice. This is Double Fine's uh, turn-based tactical fantasy game. Takes place over about 300 years. This was literally my favorite game uh, that I played two years ago. And I've done a whole series of tips. I'm, I would not be surprised if you've seen them over having seen most of the rest of my stuff. I gone through this game in exhaustive detail. But I wanted to play it again. And also, uh, at the same time as this is running, I have an XCOM 2 Let's Play going. So I thought, thought it'd be pretty cool to compare them. Although it should be noted that we should... We shouldn't really be treating them exactly as apples to apples. Or at least if you are going to compare them, you got to remember that one of these apples literally cost you four times the other one. Um, unless you were a Kickstarter backer or you bought one of them on sale, whatever. There's a bunch of things that complicate it. But the key point is this game was made on a much lower budget. It has a much more modest aim in terms of scope and size and unfortunately it also just didn't get the same kind of community reception so you also don't have the same or in fact as far as I'm aware any mod base for it um, and it wasn't built specifically it wasn't built to be hostile to mods but it wasn't built with mods in mind so I've been trying to work out what I want to do whether I want to whether I play in uh, iron mode or I play brutal difficulty. It's one or the other. I think I'm going to stick with hard and I'll just play in iron mode. Um, we will stick with the balance start and we'll start with the backer relic because I can. And we will call this massive chalice as the, the game run and let's go. So one of the things that's worth noting here is this is the only time you ever get to pick houses, right? This is the only time that this comes into play. Uh, we've got the thematic only, which means that, I mean, there's a still a fair amount of silliness in these, but there aren't literal massive fourth wall breaks. And almost all of these come from backers who backed at a high enough tier to create their own house. Um, Unfortunately, none of them are mine. Uh, the other thing that is useful to know, if you want to make sure that you have two characters from the same house, you should pick them here. Let's see. This looks pretty cool. So we will have a Kvass, and they will even get the relic. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make sure that we have double Kvass. Okay, so this means we will have a pair of siblings in our initial vanguard. It's quite useful. Uh, it means that they'll definitely be the same class, and we can, yeah, take advantage of that. Uh, let's see, what else? That looks pretty neat. Yep, Brave the Night, Save the Day. Yeah, sure, sounds good. Um, another random... I wonder if it's randomly picking a letter and then a house, or if it just randomly picks from the list. Okay. Blood Moon, a wolf hunts better in a pack. Yeah. Uh, that looks good, actually. And I, we'll do double Blood Moon. So what I'm doing here is I'm deliberately trying to make sure that I have more chances to try and keep these initial families. Um, Okay, it was Blood Moon, so... Uh... Blackthorn, Blink, Bloody Bear, blah blah blah. Should have paid more attention to where. Okay, great. So it it is almost entirely cosmetic, but it isn't actually purely cosmetic. Because we know they're in the same family, and they're in the same family. I'm pretty sure it was intended to be entirely cosmetic, but yeah. Patience. Patience. I don't see what patience has to do with this. It should have happened by now. Life keeps to its own timetable, not ours. Oh, it doesn't stop us from trying. Good morning. Your ruler has risen. Rejoice, and let 
bellow the horns of birth. This is the only time we ever actually see regular people. Master of strategies, eternal conductor, and forger of matrimony. We do have a nice long title, don't we? How to handle ruling and commanding. Every time. The horns of battle. Fine, we'll have to do this later. The cadence is attacking. Heroes, jump in. And here we go. With you shortly. So it's a very conscious decision that you will begin with the battle. To take command because the our citizens, understandably, find it hard to trust a giant talking chalice. We are not, not unreasonable. Chalice. But the nation will listen to you because you're of their blood. Forge from the bloodlines of the great houses. Oh, and one last thing. Unfortunately, the bloodline ritual that was used to create you also bound you to us. So you can never leave the throne. But do not despair. You can still command your heroes. Look inward, and you will find that your mind can follow them anywhere. Okay. Know about you, but I'm ready to hit something Here we go. Balanced party. That's the other thing. Because we guaranteed ourselves a balanced party, we have ourselves uh, hunters, two hunters, two of these. Yep, good. If you listen okay. closely, you might be able to hear your group leaving you behind as you line up that first <laughs> Actually, the hunter okay. will be in front of the group, stealthily scouting ahead. Is that what they say they're doing? Okay, so, here we are, we're on one of the maps. So, because this is a lower budget game, uh, they have a relatively small map pool. Actually, one thing we should do, this is the gamble that we do have. Let's look at our traits. Oh, this is a bad set of traits. Is your sibling any better? No, not really. Um, I want to use my hunters as scouts, so nearsighted kind of sucks. Slow also kind of sucks. Nimble is good because dexterity is a primary stat for these guys, so nimble means that we're going to do more damage. Um, flincher, not ideal, but we'll try and avoid getting them into combat. Uh, they've got better armor? Sure, whatever. Revel is a bit of a pain, but it, it varies. It's it's not too bad. I uh, hear right they they're drunk, so they've got lower decks and intelligence and sight. That's the bad side. The thirty-seven. So this is probably going to be one of maybe two fights I'll get into, and we'll move ahead. So this is what I quite like. So slow and drunk. That's why they're that's why they're so garbage right now. So we're going to sneak into the castle. That's our aim here. And stealth is the thing I enjoy most about the hunters. They hit things with a caber. Yep. Sometimes they hit hard. We're actually just going to kind of sit back for the moment. So because there is no time limit. Simplest way of life there is. Caber jacks. Profound purveyors of violence. Yep. Great. Okay, you. Can you get anywhere with... No, you really can't. You are that useless. No, you are going to stealth move, though. So, what I find with Massive Chalice is we are looking at a game which isn't about cover, right? You'll notice there's no cover symbols showing up anywhere. It's about line of sight. So we are trying to avoid ever being caught in the line of sight of an enemy that lives. And here we go. We're not dealing with... Oh, oh, that's perfect. Okay. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to run up and run up and hit this. Okay, great. Now, um, you are going to need to move. So what we're going to do is we're going to move you away. Yes. So, great. We can see the seed. Excellent. Okay, can we actually zoom in on you? Oh, shit. I didn't mean to do that. It'll do, but it means... No, you didn't get stunned. Great. It does mean I didn't actually get to look at it. I wanted to have this guy kill it, because one, it would boost him to level two, and two, it would give us an opportunity to get... Uh, that little bit, little bit extra um, XP for our relic. 
and we want to level up our relic if we can. Okay, another thing that is an important difference uh, between... Alright, so, a couple of significant differences uh, between this and, say, XCOM. There are no range penalties. It's pure stat check. There are no range penalties for hunters. Each character has their own different attack mode, right? So, a hunter that's right next to an enemy has the same chances of hitting as a hunter that is uh, right at the edge of their range. The other thing is you did notice that um, there are symbols that are popping up. So this means I can throw, throw a bomb and hit that guy, potentially. This means that guy can also see me. We actually are just going to move up here and we're going to then end turn. So again, I'm just trying to keep out of sight. And so then you can hit. So if he hits, this guy will die and we should level this up. Unfortunately, he missed. Ah, uh, well. Right, and then if we move you up here. Let's see. 41, 51, 54%. Give it a go. Yes, good. So again, we haven't been spotted by anything, so we're just taking it easy. Okay, now you. And you. Stealth move up here. Okay, there's another one of them. Lapses are particularly annoying. Because the thing about lapses is uh, they your will take your XP. Yeah. Okay, here we go. There you go. Okay, great. Now, what we need to do is we need to kill this. This is what I feel is the bigger threat to me. Okay, you. You can't reach anyone, so you can just go over here. You pop out. If you can actually hit... Yes, there we go. A level 2 character. And level ups in this game take place immediately. You're not waiting until the end of a combat, right? So we got follow-up. We've also got better decks now. So, we've got a better chance of hitting, um, because apparently that was very insightful. Okay, so what can we do here? You can't reach either. You are kind of just stuck there. 9 to 13 damage. If I move you here, and then chuck this, may kill them. 74% chance, give it a go. Yes, excellent. Good job. Okay, and enter. I'll move you down here just in case. No, nothing. If you would stop proxying Flincher off of things that I really don't want you to have, that would be great. Okay. Alright. So. You. Sneaky pants. So we've killed at least half of the enemies. That's what that music kicking in tells me. Okay, you are not close at- oh shit. Um, let's just go back around that corner. <laughs> and we'll move you here. And you can move here. Just trying to manage that line of sight. So those guys, yep, you run up this way, you can you spot him. Fantastic. So I can just attack in melee, right? That was a glancing blow. So one of the special things about melee attacks in this game is they're guaranteed, guaranteed to do a, at least a little bit of damage. And so they did. Okay, you. You duck over here. And you can't quite make it to... Okay, fine. Let's see. 
Let's see if we can get them to come to us. Come on. Come out. Okay, you. So, um... Is it here? Okay, now, I can... Use you... To duck over here. Thank you. You can't quite make it. Also, also I mean, let's see something. 80% chance you could possibly kill it if we do this. But if I can wait one more turn, that will probably be better. So the other thing we know is it's not super close by. Aha! So I can do knockback. This won't kill it. But if I hit, I will hit it into this wall and stun it. Let's give it a go. Nope, I didn't hit. Well, bugger. This also significantly weakens my ability to do other stuff. Well, I'm going to charge him with this. Okay, good. You at least got a kill there. And you... Give it a go, why not? 80% chance. Yep, and again, and again, and again. Yes, yes. Is that it? Yes. How okay. Nice would it be if the cadence surrendered right now? Okay, so you got oh, that. Rhetorical. And we had one of the character level charge. Sweet. And we're done. Hey, Draco, how's it going? Alrighty, so we are at the start of a 300 year timeline from the point that, in fact it's going to tell us this in a moment let's have a look at our research it's gonna tell us to do a bunch of things first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build some uh, we're gonna build ourselves a second keep we're gonna build it here because we want reduced construction time everything else at the edge is pretty nice Reduce construction time sounds great. I want to keep all three of my starting families if I can. So we'll actually go keep, keep, keep everything else. Okay. Uh, the other thing is I also need to start popping out them kids, yo. Um, what have we got? So the guys that we got to give us. Okay, who has a relic? Kvass. So we need to have the Kvass family start having kids. Unfortunately, the Kvass family is kind of crap. Um, but we will put him in. Well, you can always try and fix some of these things later. Um, and we need to get more kids. Uh, do we want more hunters? Yeah, I kind of do. Also, she's level 2, which is a decent thing to have. Trick shots, maybe. So this is the hybrid classes. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to go with things that will not give us any kids. So we've got enforcers or more hunters or trick shot. Okay, let's go with this one. Super high as well. So she's particularly fertile. Um, bear strength, that's nice. Avengers, okay. Child tendency daughter, we can cope with. Great. Excellent. Alrighty, that's it. Interesting, so it's not giving us a tutorial. So in 300, we're, we're currently charging the chalice. In 300 years, we will be ready to take out the cadence. Cause for celebration indeed. Babies have been born before today. And it was glorious every time, was it not? What, unbearable shrieking and smells that are even worse? That's your idea of glorious. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, we've got kids coming out. Um, brainy and nimble. That is exactly the kind of thing I want. Awesome. Good job, Loki, for being born a pretty good baby. Um, so, that's still going. But yeah, as I said, we are currently um, we're in year three of 300. It's going to be a while. Periodically, the Cadence will attack. And they will attack in at least two locations at once. Uh, and they will corrupt. Whichever one we don't fight off will corrupt the region. It always feels okay. Weird Fantastic. Having beaten it into submission. Mm. Should have seen my books after I was done with them. Okay, so we have 
we need to put someone, uh, Caberjack or other, in this location. So, let's put one of our Caberjacks in place. How about you, our only level 2 Caberjack? You're nearsighted and puny, which is kind of crap, but um, we'll cope. And we can put in another Caberjack with you, or we can get ourselves some Shadow Jacks with this one. Oblivious is kind of bad. Tranquil, uh, nearsighted is also not great in a game where um, line of sight's very important, but I think I'm still going to go with this. There we go. And now we need one more keep. And given that uh, my heroes are going to be fairly old at this point, uh, I'm definitely going to put it in this. So again, like I need one for each class <laughs> at, a, at a minimum. We may end up with more keeps later, but this is like the bare minimum. Alright, let's keep going. The Lash. Now, we'll be making choices on the battlefield of life. What? Come on. I will not apologize if I'm passionate about it. You know when you guide the heroes in battle? Well, sometimes the people, your heroes included, will want your advice on matters they can't decide themselves. They'll be putting their choices in your hands and sometimes their lives. And the decisions you make may affect the morale of the nation. Unfortunately, we've learned that the cadence feeds off grief and malcontent. So if something tragic happens, corruption can spread very quickly. But the opposite is true, too. We will trust your decisions, whatever they end up being. Okay, a single red horse with a mute rider has arrived at the capital, which can only mean one thing. The Lash is open and accepting applicants. An extraordinarily dangerous and harrowing tournament, The Lash is a 12-year commitment with each year consisting of a different trial. Hank Jaeger Baltacles asked for permission to make this near-suicidal attempt. Hank, what you got? Impressionable, child tendency daughters, rebel, young at heart, stalwart, go for it. So he hops on the horse and rides off with the mute. Your mind reels at the thought of what the next 12 years will be like for that hero. Should be fun. And so we should periodically get updates from him. He'll probably die, but we'll cope. The Cadence will probably attack in the next 5-6 years, and that'll mark the end of this episode. Finally, okay. Some action. As you have no doubt surmised by now, it takes time for the Cadence to create its pawns. So they're only able to attack every few years. Siege ruptures latches. Okay. Multiple incursions at the same time. Our primary focus is charging up to destroy our enemy, and we can only allot enough of our energy to send out one group of heroes at a time. Pawns don't last long outside of the cadence either. So even if you win one battle, it'll be too late to fight the other. Choose wisely and blow the horns. Alrighty. So as I said. Uh, we will, yeah. we'll do this fight next time. Until then, have a great day. Bye. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you spending the time and effort watching the videos I make. Uh, if you'd like to watch more, on the left there should be another video from this playlist. On the right there will be whatever YouTube recommends. And in the center there is a convenient subscribe button, just in case you need it.